Hey friends, this is the Miss Avofi from our Half Acre Homestead. Well, recently somebody asked me to do a video on home remedies. Now, I can't do a video on every home remedy because I have no reason to do the home remedies. But I can tell you about them, okay? And here are some of the home remedies from my family history and closet that uh, you will probably just have around the house. Okay, and these are for simple things. These aren't for, you know, I uh, hear I've got to make the statement. Remember, folks, I'm not a physician, herbalist or medical professional in any way. These are just things I have learned through my life. If you suspect you have a serious illness or injury, please seek the help of a medical professional. Okay, so the first one's nausea. All right. Um, you folks, you, you know, many of us here in Canada, you would take gravel. But gravel has a lot of groggy, pull down side effects that none of us really like. And uh, can be difficult to get. I mean, you know, you pretty much got to tell them who you are, where you live, your phone number and everything to ask the pharmacist for, for gravel. We call it gravel. You in the U.S. call it Dramamine. Um, so if you have an onset of nausea and you may be pregnant, you don't know, right? So it might be beneficial to have a more natural, comfortable, non-chemical relief, okay? So for nausea, there's, there's a couple of things you can do. Most people would think to take, drink ginger ale, flat ginger ale, because real ginger ale has real ginger in it, and it's the ginger, okay? You don't need the pop, the soda pop with all the, the other crap in it. All you need to do is make yourself a hot cup of tea without milk or sugar and then drop like a quarter size piece of gi peeled ginger about that thick in the bottom of the cup with a spoonful of honey, stir it and let it steep until you can really smell the ginger. Then take the ginger out and sip that tea. Ginger is a really good thing for nausea. If you just can't stand ginger, Find yourself some peppermint tea and make it really strong. Like make two or three tea bags of your peppermint tea and some honey. And that will also help alleviate nausea. What else have we got? Oh, yes, the famous bread and milk poultice. Everybody, I'm going to put a link right here to uh, my bread and milk poultice that I used on my dog because she had uh, a bite wound we didn't know about and it had healed and closed. And when something is infected and healed and closed, you really want to open it up and let the infection out so that it can heal. This works as an infection draw, okay? It works for infected scrapes, cuts, uh, boils, infected splinters. It works really well. So all you do is you heat enough milk to saturate the bread. The bread, ha you have to have enough bread to cover the wound, okay? Period. Even if it's just a boil, you just, you know, punch out a cube of bread. And you pour hot milk over it. Hot enough that it's not going to burn you, but it's still going to be hot on your skin, okay? Because it's a combination of the yeast in the bread, the liquid in the milk, and the heat that will draw the, the poison. Um, if it's the case of a splinter or a boil, you put it directly on the wound. You make like a, a thick, thick, gooey paste. And you put it directly on the wound and cover it loosely with gauze until it either dries or cools down. And if that has not popped that boil or that splinter, repeat the process every time it cools down or dries until it does pull it. It will. I know it's a, pa it's a patience thing, but I mean, what else have you got to do, right? Um... In the case of, say, an infected scrape, like if your your child has skinned their knee and and it's kind of got pussy and it's got some red around the edges, wash it really well. Put a square of gauze on the wound, then pile the hot bread and milk poultice, only hot enough for them to stand, on top of the gauze and then wrap again with gauze. And again, repeat until it is uh, the, the poison is drawn off and the redness has gone down. Now, after that, wash with warm soapy water, rinse with cool water, and then just put on some kind of healing salve, your favorite kind of healing salve. Okay? Like plantain or comfrey salve. 
Uh, let me see what else have we got here. Plantain. People have been asking me about plantain. We are not talking about the fruit that looks like a banana. We are talking about the weed that grows in your yard. Actually, the husks from the seed are actually psyllium husks. Okay? So this is a really cool plant that people just trample on. And when I say trample on, I'm not kidding because it grows in the parts of your yard that gets a lot of traffic, like a lot of foot traffic and stuff. So it's the leaf. And here's a picture. Boom. All right. Um, the leaf is widely known for giving relief to bee stings. Um, best use fresh. If, if you're out in the woods, like uh, we did, hey, Mom, we did this with Karen one day when we were down looking at the covered bridge. Uh, my sister-in-law got stung by a wasp right there. And it was bothering her right away. So I made Howie pull the car over. And when I saw some plantain on the side of the road and I took my bottle of water and I rinsed off the plantain and I popped it in my mouth and I chewed it to a, to a mushy pulp and I literally took it out of my mouth and put it directly on the hornet sting. Now, my sister-in-law used to be an RNA and she was amazed at how fast the relief was because it helps pull the poison and take the swelling down. Now, that's if you're out in the wild or on the road or whatever. If you're at home and you get stung by two or three bees, maybe from your hive or, or anything like that, throw some warm baking soda and water paste on it. And then while you're, you know, to, to hold that while you're, um, or to give some relief while you're crushing up your plantain leaves. Go ahead, try and do it in a food processor or whatever, but a mortar and pestle or even scissors works easier because they are a really tough root. But anyway, mash it up into a pulp, Put it, uh, take the baking soda paste off, put the plantain on, and wrap it a little bit, and it will it will help ease the swelling and the pain of the sting. Oh, one of my favorites, poison ivy. Um, now I know there's a jewel, there's a, a weed out there called jewel weed for poison ivy. I have not actually gone into the research of that yet, so I can't say for sure. Although I've heard many, many good things about it. But poison ivy is actually one of the most annoying things to have. Um, as soon as you are aware you have poison ivy, okay, take a banana peel and score the inside of the banana peel until it goes right down to the skin. Don't puncture it all the way through. Just score it until it's rough and kind of sticky. Slap that right on to the area of poison ivy. Trust me, it's kind of like an alum paste. It, it helps with the itching and it helps draw. It helps not draw, but it helps dry out the poison ivy. Now listen, folks, if you don't want to walk around like my friend Gary did with a banana peel stuck to your leg, you can take a steak knife and several banana peels and scrape the inside out of the banana peel down to the skin, but don't puncture it, okay? Make a paste of all those scrapings and put it on your dots of poison ivy or whatever. Okay, that again will help dry the poison ivy and relieve the itch. Oh, okay, how do we use oatmeal? This is a good one. Um, oatmeal, it has to be old-fashioned oatmeal. It cannot be flavored or instant. It has to just be old-fashioned oatmeal. Okay, this is for large itchy rashes such as fire ants, chicken pox, or a large section of poison ivy. Like you can use the banana peel after the fact, but if you've got like chicken pox or you've been, you know, sat on a nest of fire ants, you're going to want to take some old fashioned oatmeal and you're going to put it in your food processor or coffee grinder and grind it into a cornmeal like uh, consistency, not necessarily flour, but like a, a cornmeal consistency. You're going to take a cup of that and a half a cup of baking soda and you're going to drop it into a knee-high stocking. You know the kind that your grandmother wears when she goes out? She doesn't put socks on. She puts on these knee-high nylon things. You're going to drop a cup of the oatmeal, half a cup of baking soda. You're going to tie it shut. You're going to throw it in the tub and you're going to run a hot, hot bath. 
and you're going to swirl that around in there and then you're going to let the bath cool enough that you can get into it comfortably okay your water should be cloudy not icky but cloudy and you're going to soak in that tub and what that will do is will also help dry things like uh, poison fire or fire ant poison ivy um, chicken pox anything like that it'll help relieve the itch and it will help draw the poison you can put the banana peel stuff on the larger patches or smaller patches when you get out of the tub you do that as often as you need to until your outbreak is over ah egg whites the magic of egg whites egg whites or anybody who cooks gets burned as a matter of fact i have a little burn right here if you get burned and this will work with third degree burns okay i'm not telling you not to call an ambulance folks call an ambulance if you have third degree bad third degree burns but egg whites right out of the fridge okay separate them and slap those egg whites or very gently pour those egg whites onto like whisk them so that they're broken up and put them on a burn right away as fast as you can get from the burn to the egg whites get those egg whites on the burn um egg whites are the closest thing we can we have to like amni a protein amniotic fluid and it will help heal give relief and heal without scarring as much as possible um the faster you get the egg whites on that burn the more relief you'll have and the less chance of scarring you'll have okay now if the burns are really bad of course call an ambulance but you can help give somebody relief in the meantime by putting egg whites on the burn while you're waiting for the ambulance to come from small burns to big burns if you need to do something do egg whites and last but not least headaches as most of you know i have been plagued with migraines now i don't get them as often as i used to because i've been through menopause and that changes how your body functions don't even get me started anyway headaches uh everything from a mild you know annoying headache to migraines are uh exacerbated by dehydration now we may not think we're dehydrated because we drink coffee and tea all day long but caffeine dehydrates so if you get a headache and you're going to take some tylenol if you take it with coffee that will zip it into your system faster but water is your best friend if you have a glass of water while you're taking your tylenol your water is more apt to act faster on your headache than the tylenol will because your brain when you get a headache nine times out of ten there's a certain amount of dehydration in your brain tissue okay so do yourself a favor drink water sip 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 drink it with a straw it doesn't matter get your full eight glasses of water of uh full eight ounce glasses of water daily and you will find headaches are not something that you're going to suffer with a lot all right this is the mrs wolfie from our half acre homestead with just a few home remedies from my family's medicine chest take care bye bye Thank you.